Hi everyone, my name is Leanne and today I'm going to be telling you all about the books that I read in July, which by my normal reading pace is not that many. I only finished six books in July, but I'm not being too hard on myself because in July I moved house, I moved to London, I started a new job and I have also been, you know, simultaneously working on my final project for my masters and also trying to maintain some level of social life and some level of sanity. So I do feel like towards the end of the month I sort of figured out a routine to when I could squeeze in reading. So hopefully in August I will be able to read a little bit more than I have in July and I'll be using the new 3 a -thon as motivation for that. As for the reading rush, I sucked at the reading rush. I don't even remember which books I picked and how many of them I read, but I think I read like a couple from my reading rush TBR. But anyways, into the books. One of the first books I finished in July was a short story collection, and that was Jellyfish by Janice Galloway. This is a collection of short stories that very much feel like grounded in Scotland, and they also mainly focus on the intricacies of human interactions, but often with a particular focus on sexuality. It's full of unusual metaphors and really acute observations about how people interact with one another and how complicated people's feelings can be. A collection that really makes you confront your own fears, your own fallibility. And at moments it's a really funny collection as well. Some of these stories I didn't connect to as much as others and I definitely think the collection got stronger as it went on and I think I possibly would have restructured the collection in a way to mix those stronger stories in throughout but I guess they were just the stories that were um, the ones that appealed to me the most. You might get a completely different reading experience from it in that way. Um, but nonetheless, I would really recommend it. I thought it was a really fantastic collection. It really taps into some very powerful emotions. Next is a work of non-fiction, I Am, I Am, I Am by Maggie O'Farrell. Maggie O'Farrell is predominantly a fiction writer, but I've never read any of her work before and I really enjoyed reading her non-fiction. This is a book about the author's 17 brushes with death. Now, some of these are more tenuous con connections than others, like some of them are like, I don't feel like that was exactly a brush with death, um, but I think in each section of this book we are faced with really really powerful emotions and complex thought processes. Each section is split up by the particular body part that is connected to the brush with death. The sections that I found the most powerful and I felt like I connected with the most were the sections that were about um, how people with wombs and vaginas have different kind of health risks to people who don't. This book does feature pregnancy and miscarriage and risk during birth, which is something that I don't think people necessarily talk about enough. I read this in two sittings. It's such a readable book. Um, I thought it was fantastic and I would highly recommend it. I think it's a really interesting structure and a really interesting lens to have what could be quite a straightforward traditional memoir. I think the structure gives it a lot of nuance and it makes it really interesting. The next book I read was Lanny by Max Porter. This is not the final edition. The final edition is much nicer, this is a proof. Um, but I was really scared of reading this book because I absolutely loved Max Porter's previous book, Grief is a Thing with Feathers. So I was worried I wasn't gonna like this one as much. Um, I didn't like it as much, um, but I still think it's a masterful novel, although I'm reluctant to categorise it as such. I think this is much more akin to a play. This is a story about a little boy named Lanny who kind of represents goodness and innocence. And the story is told from four different perspectives. We have Lanny's mum, Lanny's dad, Pete, and we also have a character named Dead Papa Toothworth. The last of which is really difficult to explain as a character. He kind of reminds me of the BFG, but he is like a collective history of humanity. He remembers and collects everything that anyone has ever said. And there are really interesting parts of the narrative where the typesetting and like the speech weaves in and out of each other and you hear 
like really common phrases that people say a lot and I, I don't even know how to explain it but it is like you are walking through a town and you are able to hear every single conversation that's going on. The perspectives flick between these four characters but as the book progresses the sections are no longer labelled but you have become so accustomed to these characters voices and their ways of speaking that you are able to pick out who is saying what and even if you can't I don't think it necessarily matters because of that idea of picking up on different conversations. It really does feel like a play to me and I really struggled to get into it because I was reading it in like bits and pieces and small chunks but once I was able to sit down and read like a big big chunk of this book I absolutely loved it. I do think you need to try and experience it in as few sittings as possible and that's why it, it does feel very much like a play. Ultimately I think this is a book about exploring why people do bad things, exploring the importance of trying to be good. I think Max Porter has really crafted a book that explores so much of the complexities of humanity by just giving them a tiny, tiny glimpse. It's a really inventive novel and I can understand if you are maybe a little bit put off or intimidated by some of the more um, innovative things that are done in this book, but I would really encourage you to give it a go anyway. I think it's just truly fantastic. Next up, I have a children's book. I have A Pippi Longstocking by Astrid Lindgren. This book was so much fun. It is a children's classic all about a little girl named Pippi Longstocking and the friendship she forms with her two neighbours. We follow Pippi developing the, these friendships but also her um, trying to navigate her life without her parents around. She lives alone and independently. Um, we follow her going to school and her unpicking the absurdity of formalised education and I think if you enjoyed those aspects of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland then I think you would really like Pippi Longstocking and I think it would be really interesting to compare the two in quite a critical way. I think Pippi is a fascinating character to spend time with and if this is a children's classic that you haven't got to yet I would really recommend it. It's so much fun and you can fly through it in one sitting. The poetry book I read in July was Insomnia by John Kinsella. There are so many topics dealt with in this book and I think it's balanced really, really well between all those different aspects. There are poems about art and nature and humanity and imagination. It's such a broad thing to say, but these are poems about a contemporary human experience. The poet is able to show a real beauty and intricacy in things that might initially seem mundane or unworthy of an in-depth portrait being painted of them. Many poems in this are also connected to other famous works of literature, um, which is something that I really enjoy. And there are also a lot of poems in here that have a particularly Irish perspective, which again is something that I am really drawn to in any kind of writing. And in those poems that have an Irish connection, there is definitely exploration of identity and colonization. There are poems in this that deal with loss and trauma and grief. There are poems that have powerful political angles. There's just so much going on in here and it's definitely the kind of collection that you can go through with the pen and start marking it up and doing a close reading of. This is the kind of collection that I can really see just slotting right into a university syllabus. In terms of the style of the poetry, I think if you are someone who enjoys poetry that has long lines, then you will definitely appreciate this one. That's not really what I'm drawn to. I much prefer a shorter line in poetry, but there's definitely a real rhythm to this collection. And I think if you are interested in exploring those kind of really in-depth themes, then I would really recommend this one. The final book I completed in July was One More Chance by Lucy Ayrton. This is a really interesting book that is from a perspective that I've never really read from before. This is about a woman named Danny who had quite a difficult upbringing and found herself getting in a lot of trouble with the law. She's been in and out of prison. When we meet Danny, she is in prison and she has a vision that something terrible is going to happen to her daughter and she sees herself saving her daughter. But the date that this is meant to happen on is prior to when Danny is due to be released. This is a book about what she is willing to do to be able to escape, to be able to save her daughter. The book features flashbacks which demonstrate the circumstances in Danny's life which have led her to find herself in this position and I think the book really brilliantly demonstrates how difficult it is to break that cycle 
once you do find yourself in trouble. I think the book is sympathetic towards Danny without excusing anything that she has done and I think that must have been a really difficult balance to strike when writing this novel. There's also a lot in here to do with the effects prison can have on inmates mental health and there's definitely a lot of critique around the prison system and if you are someone who doesn't know an awful lot about that particularly in relation to women's prisons, I would really recommend this book. There are a few elements of the plot that I found a little bit too convenient or unbelievable. I think my appreciation of this book definitely tapered off towards the end, but nonetheless I would really highly recommend it and it is a very obvious comparison and I think they've definitely tapped into that with this cover, but if you like Orange is the New Black, I think you will really like this book. Today are all the books that I finished in July. I am currently reading The Secret Agent by Joseph Conrad. I'm about 50% of the way through this and I'm actually really enjoying it, which I am very much pleasantly surprised by. I'm definitely gonna try to finish this one soon and tell you guys all about my thoughts on it. But these are all of the books that I completed in July. Hopefully in August I will find myself getting back into the rhythm of reading lots. But anyways, I am happy with what I read this month considering how busy I was. If you have thoughts on any of these books, do leave me a comment down below. I would love to have a chat about them. And as ever, they will all be linked in the description box as well. I hope you guys are doing well and I will talk to you in my next video.